Welcome to this example, another example of doing a React testing library to specifically testing uh, Axios, uh, the class here in WebPT 11. We wanted to test uh, to give some examples more of how to use Axios and mock Axios, and then also to test uh, a button click inside your project. You had a next and previous buttons and weren't sure how to test that. This is one way to test it. I'm sure there are many other ways as is usual, but I'm going to show you what I've created here. So in order to illustrate this, I've created an application. This is a Wikipedia application. What it does is it starts with um, uh, showing the Lambda page. It has a link to the Lambda page. If we click on that, this is what Lambda is. It's a Greek alphabet letter. It has a bunch of other links in here. And what this API does, the Wikipedia API, it will pull back the page views per day of how many page views were for this entry at Lambda. So it shows all the number of page views you can scroll through for the last couple of months. It also pulls down the links that are on this page. And it shows you the links. And specifically, it shows you, it has a list of the text for those links. And that's what this next button done. This next button will pick a random link from the Lambda page and will then go to it. And it will show you the page used for that next item. So this is Archaic Greek Alphabets. You click on that. This is the Wikipedia entry for Ar Archaic Greek Alphabets. And this will tell you the page use for it. And then next we'll take a random link from Archaic Greek Alphabets. And I'm not even going to say this. Abracadarium, Abacadarium, I guess is how you say that. Don't even know what that is, so let's click on it and find out. It's an inscription consisting of the letters of an alphabet. Oh, how about that? So that makes sense why that would be in a Greek language, and it tells you, look at these page views in the last couple of months for Abacadarium. It's kind of an interesting little randomized alphabet. A is for aardvark, redirected moves, and you keep going through, and it, it shows you a bunch of different things. And this is an interesting, the number of people who are looking at 9-11, which is uh, quite a bit, quite interesting. So, um, and so you can go through, and uh, it's a nice little illustrative. So what I want to do is I want to be able to test that when we click on Next, when we click on Next, um, that it actually is going to go to the next item that we want. And so here's what we've set up. Well, first of all, let me, let me show you this. In order to test an API call, you want to mock the API which means you need to understand how the API works. And specifically, we're going to look at the network, and I'm going to click on Next, and we're going to see what it returns back. This is our API call. This API call is, you can see it's done with a titles equal 2007 BATNA bombing. right? So that, that, is, that is the thing that changes in this API call, is on the URL it has that titles equal there below. It says title equals 2000, and, and whatever titles equal is, whatever's after that, it will then uh, query for that. And it returns a JSON object that has a continue. You can look that up if you're interested in them. Um, we're not using that though. Uh, we are using query. So the query means that you made a query. This is the response. These are the pages that are in that response. This page number is the actual number value for the 2007 BATNA bombing, um, whatever's showing there. Um, and, and that's if you did a query that had multiple page returns, that's what it would show. And then it has the title here. And then it also has page views, a, um, an object with keyed on date for page views. And then it has an array of object links that spe specify the actual titles that are linked on that page. So that's what the API does. So let's look at our application. Our application has one component called the wiki page count. If we look at that, see the wiki page count, it will display what it returns right here. It returns the link across the top with the title. It has a button for next, so it will handle next. Then it has the page views and it. If it's loading, it then loads data, it shows loading data. If it's not loading, then it shows, it iterates through the page views and shows you uh, what they are just by date and then um, and then here it determines if it's a null, then show zero. Right. 
And at the beginning, we're doing a use effect and use state. So we've created a couple different state variables. One is the title, one is the URL. We have one for next title, and then we have one for page views. So an array of page views, and then loading and is loading. And our use effect at the very beginning when there's a URL, our use effect will, uh, uh, at the very beginning, whenever there's a change to the URL, it makes the Axios call, and then it resolves the result of the Axios call by um, getting a random link from the next. It sets the page views with whatever the values are returned back for page views. It sets the next title with the random link title that we get off the page. And then, of course, it sets loading to false because uh, we set it to true to begin with, and then we resol resolve it to false. And then here, if we want to change the title, we change the title in our use effect, which will then change the URL, which will then trigger this use effect, uh, which, which calls the Axios get. So all we need to do then is change the existing title to our next title, and that's what the next button does, the handle next. All it does is set the existing title, the title of the application, to next title, which then sets the URL with the value of that title, and then it calls Axios and gets new data. So that's what we're doing here. How are we going to test this? I created it in app test JS, and you may think you may want to create a wiki page count.test.js that is true specifically for stuff on this page. But for the app test, since we are testing the clicking of a button and the calling of the Axios, it's more of an application level test. Okay. And so as we're looking at, uh, because the button needs to be there. So we are rendering our app and you can see our API. Our API is, is um, we're mocking Axios as we did before we're using mocking the get function of Axios. We're creating a um, spying function that returns every time get is called. It's returning a resolved promise that has data, which is part of the Axios. All the when you look at the then state uh, or the then path or the resolved path of a um, Axios resolved promise, it has data in there that Axios puts in for us. But then inside of that, what we have here on line 11 through line 22, uh, sorry, through line 21, line 11 through line 21, this is our mocked API. So we're going to make it so that every time in this test context now, when Axios get is called, we're going to return back this object, this query pages with this page number. And we mimic this, made this mimic the way out of that. So the first page are going to be page title. And it's going to have one page view. We're not testing page views now, so that's fine. Although we need it there to render properly with error. Um, and then we have a links. And so that means the next, when we click on next, it should call next page title. So let's look at our test now. In our test, we're doing React Testing Library, pulling down the app. We are then awaiting the page view count. If we look at our wiki page count, you can see that we have a data test ID of page view count. And we put this test ID data in here specifically because we wanted to be able to wait on that. We want to make sure that the application renders all of those page view H2s. So we're waiting on that. We're then setting our result. This is what we're going to be looking for. And remember, this is the API call, Wikipedia API call, that we're expecting it to call this URL, so dot .get of Axios with this URL that has the next page title. Why? Because when you click on next, we want it to hit this title here. And so, uh, so that's the result that we're expecting. We are then grabbing the next button, and line 36 to 38, we're clicking that next button, and then we await again the resolution of that click. We want to make sure that we await to get the new page view uh, count items in there for, the, for our test ID. Once we get the new ones, at that point, we can be reasonably assured that we've called our Axios, 
And so on line 42, we're expecting our axios get to have been called with our result on line 31. Right, and so then let's take a look at that in action. I'm running all the tests, and there it is. It runs fine. And of course, we always want to we want to do a dot not. That should run automatically. If not, I'll do an A. And it's running for us. And that did not function properly. So we'll do a, uh, run all tests again. Or if it just didn't compile properly. Okay, so that should be failing. It was failing earlier, so let me try this again. This is testing watches behave strangely. All right, and now I'm going to put it back to not so we can see it fail. There we go, and that failed. So it was the watch parameter of our test that was weird. So now you can see it's saying, hey, so look, I want you to see this. It's saying that, hey, this failed. Uh, we expect this to not to have been called. We expected not this query, and yet it was actually called twice. It was called once here with this parameter. Why? Because this is the, the original call of the lambda, but then it was also called a number two, and we didn't want it to be called with that. Right, and so then it failed on us. So then, of course, we can come back and save that, and it runs. And now we have successfully tested our next. Our dot next. Let's make sure, yeah, there it is. 